Welcome back to Smoke Barbecue Source. I'm Ricer, and today we have the Weber Searwood 600. Now I'm gonna do this video a little different than I normally do. We're actually going to assemble it as soon as the boys are home from track. Then we're gonna do the burn off and talk about some of the features that's on this new model from Weber. If I sound a little rough, yeah, I have a cold. Cold and flu season. Some of you out there might not actually know that Weber is no longer gonna be making the smoke fire. The Searwood is the new pellet grill, and the smoke fire, they're starting to discontinue that model so you won't be seeing that around anymore. Which is kind of surprising to me to be honest because I really enjoyed the stealth version. I know a lot of people had issues with the first model but as time went on Weber did kind of fix most of the issues that that original pit had. So let's start unboxing it. Now they don't want you to actually use a razor blade to open up this box. They suggest to use a scissors. Now not all of you have a state power lifter and a state champ hurdler to be able to put your Weber Searwood together. But we will give you an approximate time of how long this is gonna take. And we'll kind of walk you through it in case we run into some of the trickier parts during the assembly. Right on top, there's your instructions. The assembly guide is pretty small, so hopefully that means there's not a lot of parts. Let me get all this out here. One second, lift it up. You can lift it up. There you go. I'll just set it down in the hopper. Now everything that I see is kind of packed pretty tight. So the packaging is good, but it's maybe a little confusing. So make sure you're opening up all the boxes because there's a lot of stuff packed in everything. If you see here, we have like a star and a triangle. So that's how we're gonna line everything up for this assembly. So far the cart and stuff is kind of awkward. You know, they want you to put this brace on before you actually just put the legs on it. The back ones you put on individually, but the front one, you got to put that brace on first. These screws, they do actually have some thread tightener right on them. So maybe these screws don't loosen up and fall out when you're moving it around. You're most definitely going to need two people to do this assembly. After you get the screws kind of like snug or kind of started at least ways, then you got to put the bottom shelf on. It's really surprising that you're a starting running back for the football team as many times as you drop that Allen wrench. <laughs> yeah. Now the next step is we gotta put the, there, see, fumble again. Loss of 10 yards. Just loosen those up a little bit. I have all these. Ooh. There's gotta be another screw then. Then Jiro dropped it. Fumble Ruski. What? See, I just called it Fumble Ruski. Is that the right way? You're going lefty. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Please stop talking. Go sit down. You have to loosen it up? Go, go look at Twitter. I don't go on Twitter. Go on X then. Before you guys tighten anything though, guys, you gotta completely stop. Cause this is It's been a kind of a struggle, to be honest with you, this easy bottom shelf. I hate when the part packs aren't right and they figure it out after they've already packaged the whole pit together and they're like, oh, these aren't gonna work. So now we're gonna put this baggie in there and then it's up to you to make sure that you're looking at the baggie and find out their mistake. So be careful when you're doing this because there is bees in the other package of nuts and bolts, but you have a little plastic bag filled with them and these are for the actual shelf. So on the outside, we have the ones with the washers and then on the front side, we have these ones that they put in the little baggie. It's been an actual half an hour since we started that bottom shelf. Okay, I, it's just the hole. When you put them in, it doesn't even go in the hole right. So this self-tapping nut here, it's screwed up. We can't actually get it tight. So it'd probably be better just to give us some nuts and bolts and then we just tighten it up that way instead of these because this thing is bent inside or something because there's no way we can tighten up that that bolt on the outside you have the other cutter pin. yeah i got the other cutter pin put the cutter pin on get it locked over and then put on our caps finally it's not perfect but we're gonna deal with it in norwegian terms Ufta. In the fire pot, I'm really kind of surprised at how this is cut. It's almost like somebody took a tin snips and then like a wire brush and just polished it up a little bit. I know it doesn't have to be precise, but usually typically Weber has really nice machine parts. Those just hang up on the sides there. It does have this cover that goes on. 
and that's kind of your heat deflector part. So seeing that that inside is being covered up, I guess it really doesn't matter that much because this upper like heat deflector part looks pretty sharp. So the next part that goes in is actually our, I'm gonna call it big huge flavor bar. Kind of looks like one and I think it's gonna kind of act like one. The next step is to put in the ash and grease catch which is kind of nice. It's gonna be a little bit of a funnel system and then that is your easy clean out that goes in. So that bottom assembly, it's pretty big so it should catch a lot of the ash and grease. And from what I see, it's gonna be pretty simple to clean out. The lid's going back on. D's? There is no D's. <laughs> now the easy part, we put on the handles. One thing I'll say though is these grates, I think they're stainless steel and they're very heavy duty. That's a good thing. And they'll be very easy to clean. Before we put the grates in, I do wanna point out that this is a nice cast aluminum bottom chamber. So that's gonna last a very long time. And they send you one meat probe. I think it's gonna work pretty decent. It's nice and thin. It does have like a little stopper point, but the controller, it's kind of crazy. It's just this thin little panel. Here's our cable or our USB-C that it's gonna plug into. Just line it up, get it in, and it actually just kind of magnetically snaps on. Next thing is just to actually take the cord and plug it into the hopper so we can power this up. That did take us an hour and a half, partially user error because we didn't look at that extra little baggie they sent along with, with the instructions for those smaller screws. So if you catch that, you should be able to put this pit together in an hour. Some people are gonna think that this is a Traeger. It is enamel coated on the outside, which is really nice. I'm not a big fan of the 2015 style pellet grills with no front casters. I guess boys, pull the stickers off and we can get this thing fired up. Oh, thanks. There, this is what I have to deal with teenagers. Before I do the burn off, I just kind of want to show what this hopper looks like. This is a 20 pound hopper, which will work pretty decent for an overnight cook. You have an easy clean out, slides open. Close it up and that's just this big red handle. The burn off on this is pretty simple. Get in some pellets. Our controller is already on so we can just go and scroll this up to 450 degrees and it goes in five degree increments, which is nice. Press in that main control button, let it off and you'll hear that fan start. And you'll also see on the controller, this nice little orange little flame. Obviously I don't have this auger primed, so it's probably gonna take a little bit longer to get the pellets into that fire pot. I'm just gonna roll the dice that everything is operating correctly in this pit and then wait for the smoke to appear. Now standing here, it's not very loud. The fan isn't making a bunch of noise, but once that afterburner kicks in, it might pick up a few decibels, we'll see. I do like this nice heavy duty sidebar seeing that we have to carry it around this is pretty sturdy in the bottom shelf it's pretty good too it just was a pain to put together some of you that are watching are gonna notice right away that the hopper is on the side it's not in the back anymore and I do like this that is one thing that I really didn't like about the smoke fire is that that back hopper was kind of a pain to fill up I hear the plinks and the plunks of some pellets hitting that fire pot. We're gonna have smoke soon. We might as well plug in our one meat probe. Oh, here comes the smokies. Yep, it says 63 degrees in here, so that's working. Now we're getting a bunch of smoke, that's for sure. I hear that afterburner starting to try to kick in. There it goes. We've got ignition, NASA. Better turn on my exhaust fan too, because I'm gonna feel like I'm in a KISS concert. Now, I didn't time this or anything, but I can tell that it is preheating faster than the Stealth Edition. We're almost there. I'm getting ready to set my 30 minute timer. Huh, there it is, timer set. We're about 15 minutes into this burn off and I figured it's a good time to actually talk about a couple of the upgrades to the Searwood. We'll talk about the controller first. It has what they're calling the Rapid React PID. It has a temperature range of 180 degrees up to 600 degrees. It also still has the smoke boost setting, which is great for any type of barbecue cooks. They also talk about because of this rapid react PID controller is if you open up the lid, it's supposed to be able to boost quicker 
so your temps don't drop down as fast. Now we all know that's a great feature, especially when you're doing any type of grilling. This is their new direct flame cooking. They're saying that the whole grate is going to be able to give you a sear. The pit is 45 and three quarter inches tall and it's 38 and a half inches wide and 23 inches deep. Now that's just on the Searwood 600. The XL, that's a little bigger. We have 648 square inches of cooking space with 420 square inches on the bottom and 228 on this top grate, which gives you easily enough room for a small family. The build quality, it's pretty solid. Now putting the legs on in the bottom shelf, it was a little tricky, but once we got all those screws tightened up, it stiffened right up. The wagon wheels are kind of rubberishly feeling, but they're just your typical Weber wagon wheel. And on the front, Obviously, we just have your standard pirate peg legs. With the Searwood, you can actually purchase a rotisserie and even a griddle that will fit inside that chamber. That's pretty good for all of you people that are looking for a do-all pellet grill. I'm pretty sure they're sending me those accessories, and once we get them, we will do a cook using them. Like most of the pellet grills these days, you can buy a front and a side shelf accessory, but with the Searwood, you can get some of that Weber Crafted Collection accessories to add to it too, like the pizza stone. My eyes are watering, and that's a good sign because we have plenty of smoke in the studio, and I do have exhaust systems that drag most of it out but I always kind of judge what it's like standing in here. And if my eyes are watering, it passes the test. To do the shutdown on this pit, just hit the menu, scroll until you see that little power button flashing right there, enter it in. It's gonna take about 15 minutes and then this pit will be cooled down. And then you could actually go right into cooking on it. I think our next video is gonna be about cooking on the Searwood and how it performs. So I'm going to want to do at least three cooks before I pull any maintenance on it too, because we all remember the issues with the smoke fire. I wanna see if we're getting any grease and ash buildup around that fire pot. But that new design, it looks like there's plenty of holes for all of that to fall down into that ash catch. Now, I'm not sure if there's gonna be a lot of information in the description below, but we'll have some type of links that you can click on. It's probably a great time to become a subscriber because we're gonna be doing more on this pit. Now, I still have seven minutes left in this shutdown procedure, but I don't want your eyes to get all bloodshot and watery. So I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye <laughs>